Welcome to Flurn, it's a time to Flurn. Everybody likes to Flurn. I'm assuming that, but if you're watching that, there's a good chance that's true. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create a tilt shift effect in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you a super simple approach to creating a tilt shift effect for your images. Now, before we get started in this effect in Photoshop, let's talk about where this effect gets its name. It's actually from a physical lens called a tilt shift lens. And these type of lenses are still used in photography today, primarily for architecture photography. So when you're photographing a building, you wanna make sure that all of the lines are straight. But if you point your camera up a little bit, you're gonna notice that the lines start to converge toward the top. They look like they're getting closer and closer together, which is kind of a no-no in architecture photography. So using a tilt shift lens to photograph a building means you can keep your camera looking straight on and then shift your lens up so you actually will capture the top of the building as well. But because your image sensor remains parallel, the lines are not going to converge on the top. So that's the shift function of a tilt shift lens. Now the tilt function actually allows you to change the focal plane. So in a traditional lens, the focal plane is straight on. It's gonna be parallel to the sensor plane, just like the lens you're seeing me right now. I'm in focus, everything in this plane here is in focus, and then the background is a little bit out of focus. However, with a tilt shift lens, you can use the tilt effect to get different areas of your photo in focus. Now photographers got their hands on these lenses and started doing really interesting stuff. Instead of trying to make everything look perfect in a scene, they purposely altered the tilt of the lens to make objects look like they're in miniature. They're able to make the center of the frame in focus with the top and the bottom out of focus. And that makes it look like you have a very shallow depth of field, even when you're photographing something huge like a city. Now this effect is incredibly easy to do in Photoshop, but there are a couple of things we wanna keep in mind before getting started. So for this tilt shift effect to have maximum impact, you wanna make sure you have details in the middle of your frame, as well as on the top and the bottom of your frame. You can see here that if we don't have a lot of detail on the top and the bottom of the frame, although this does have a tilt shift effect applied to it, you don't see that effect as much and the overall tilt shift isn't as noticeable. Next, I recommend using a photograph from above. It gives you a little bit greater of a depth of field that you can actually play with for this effect. Also photographing from above tends to keep things out of the sides of your frame, which is our next tip. Now, the whole idea here is we're blurring the top and the bottom of our images. Now, if you have a building that's just like straight up in the center of your frame, well, it's just gonna blur the top and bottom of the building, which isn't gonna give you that tilted effect. So I would recommend avoiding images that just have buildings in the foreground. Now, with all that said, it's time to go ahead and jump into Photoshop and get this done. Now, if you haven't already downloaded your sample image for this tutorial, go ahead and click right up here. You can download that for free on flurn.com. So let's go ahead and open up our sample tilt shift effect image. We're gonna hit open and F for full screen. Now, as you can see here, we followed all of our rules. We're photographing from above. We've got people in the foreground, people in the background, so we can see nice perspective. We don't have anything taking up the left and the right sides of our frame. So when we have this tilt shift effect, it's gonna look more realistic and we have a lot of detail in our image. So the first thing I recommend doing is converting your background layer to a normal layer. You can just double click right here in the gray area and it's gonna convert it and to say it's gonna convert it to layer zero. That's totally cool. So you can see it says layer zero and my little lock sign has disappeared. Now that we have it as a regular layer, it's time to convert this to a smart object. So we're gonna right click here and go to convert to smart object. Now we're using a smart object because we're gonna apply a filter, a tilt shift filter to this layer. And anytime you use a filter on a layer, it's a great idea to do a smart object because you can change that filter at any time. If you don't do a smart object, it's set. It's like set in stone, done, too bad. So <laughs> make sure you use a smart object. It's just gonna make things a lot easier down the line. So now that we have a smart object, we're gonna go to filter down here to blur gallery and over to, look at that, tilt shift. So our tilt shift has a couple of really great effects. Now to start off with, let's go ahead and cover all the on-screen controls. So first we wanna click here in the center and just move this up and down and see what different effects it produces for our image. Basically you're choosing the area of your image that's gonna be in focus with this center line. And I'm gonna choose right about here. 
Now, the area that's out of focus is right here. So this dotted line here and this dotted line here, let's just bring this up a little bit so you can see both of those dotted lines. So we have a dotted line here on the top and a dotted line here in the bottom. Basically, this dictates where you're completely out of focus. So we're completely in focus from the solid line to the solid line. And then we have a feathering effect from solid line to dotted line, going from in focus to out of focus. And again, down here, in focus to out of focus. So if I bring these lines up, there we go. Let's go ahead and bring that one up. And I bring this one up as well, or down rather. You see, we have a lot more of a gradual effect where we have an in focus area that slowly gets out of focus. And then up here, it's in focus and then slowly gets out of focus as well. Or if you're interested, let's go ahead and bring all those together. You can get an even more pronounced effect by bringing these all together. And you can see here now just the center area is in focus and everything else is out of focus. Now, my suggestion is actually to bring these a little bit wider. It looks a little bit more realistic and it looks like the actual lens effect that you would get. All right, so let's go ahead and bring these down and you can even bring them even further down off your image if you want even more of a subtle effect. And with this sort of thing, I find that the more subtle your effect are, the more, the more fuddle, I find that the more subtle your effect is, the more realistic it tends to look. So let's go ahead and bring this right down here. I think this is looking pretty good. Now you have controls right out here. This is your little blur dial. So you can choose to have less blur or more blur, making an object look more or less miniature. Again, you just kind of want to avoid going super crazy with this because it's just not going to look real. All right, so something like that actually I think is looking pretty good, maybe a little bit less. Now we do have some controls. Actually, I think on the bottom here, I'd like to bring in a little bit more blur here on the bottom. So let's go ahead, I need to bring this up because I need to grab that guy and blur a little bit more on the bottom. There we go. The blur on the top looks pretty good and good deal. So it's just starting, you can see, it's just starting to blur these little guys on the bottom there. I like, I like that, I think it's starting to look good. All right, so this is your time to just get in here and play around. Now, you do have some controls here on the right hand side. Of course, you can choose your blur and your distortion as well. So with more distortion, it basically makes it look like things are being kind of pulled towards the center and you have an option here for symmetric distortion as well. Now, take a look up here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this off and turn that back to zero. And you're gonna see now we have less distortion. And I like this effect with a little bit less distortion, but of course you can choose your own effect. Now we have some additional effects down here. You can change light bokeh, which will take your lighter areas and start to just blow them out a little bit, which for this effect, honestly, I don't think makes much sense. We do have uh, for motion effects, that's only for the path blur and the spin blur, but noise, I do recommend adding a little bit of noise to your effect here. There we go. You can hit control or command plus and use the space bar to kind of move around. Having a little bit of noise in your image, see I went a little bit too much, change the size and change the roughness a little bit. There we go, bring the amount down. Having a little bit of noise in your image, let's go ahead and bring it down to zero. So you can see there's no noise here. Having just a little bit of noise tends to make it look more realistic. It makes it look more like a photograph and less like this was done in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and zoom out a couple times. And you know what? I think that looks great. So we're gonna go right up here to the very top I'm gonna make sure we click on a high quality, yes please, and hit okay. And you can see it went ahead and rendered our tilt shift effect on our photo. Now that's it for applying the tilt shift effect. But remember earlier when we made this into a smart object, I said we could go back and change this at any time. So jumping back into Photoshop, I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know what? I want a little bit less in focus. So all I have to do because I made this a smart object is double click where it says blur gallery Boop, and check this out. I'm back into my tilt shift effect and I can simply change any of these parameters. There we go. I'm gonna bring that down a little bit and we're gonna have a little bit less in focus now, which is gonna enhance this effect. So I can hit okay and we're good to go. And you can see this can be changed literally at any time. So let's try it one more time. I just want maybe just a tiny bit more blur there we go. And I'm gonna move this down just a little bit and move this down a little bit too. There we go. Let's hit okay. And awesome. We have a really nice looking tilt shift effect. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click right up here to subscribe to our channel. We got a great playlist right here. If you're just getting started in Photoshop, I highly recommend that. And click up here to learn more about Flurn Pro. You get unlimited access to all of our tutorials, teaching advanced retouching, compositing, Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. Thank you so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.